Hey guys, uh, so today um, I'm going to be making something. Well, I kind of already made a bit of it, so uh, I'm able to talk about it. But we're going to be making a word clock. Now that's a clock that doesn't tell the time in numbers, but it tells the time in words. So it will say something like, it is around 5 o'clock p.m. Or it will say, it is quarter to 5 p.m. Or something like that. So what it involves is having a bunch of LEDs all set up in an array. So one LED there, 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 there all like that. Uh, and we address those using electronic stuff. I know that doesn't sound too complicated, but it is, it's pretty similar to that. I've got some stuff set up over there, so I'll show you that in a second. Um, and I've also got a board over here, and I'll be drawing on it to explain some of the, uh, the concepts behind it. Now, I'll be using something called an Arduino. No, hang on. Arduino, that's it. That was one of the hardest things about this project, is learning how to say that word. An Arduino, it's, it's, um, it's like a pick board. It's uh, an electronic board that you can program and it's got inputs and outputs that you can address using programming. Now, programming is one of my skills, so I do a lot of PHP, HTML, JavaScript, and it's all a bit transferable. I mean, all the concepts are roughly the same. So let's get started, and I'll show you uh, some of the electronic concepts first before we go into the programming. Uh, as a quick side note, actually, I didn't really explain why I'm making a word clock. Well, about two years ago now, I made a word clock in Flash, a uh, bit of a programming project. I saw someone who made a screensaver for Macs. I can't really remember who it was, um, but uh, David Hayes or something like that. But I, I decided to make one in Flash because I fancy doing it and it's something I enjoy. But I thought, why can't I make this in real life? So I had a, a quick search around on the internet and there are lots of these things around. So you can buy them on the internet, but they're about 150 to 200 dollars, and I don't have that kind of cash floating around to, to play with. So I thought I'd make one myself. Now it's actually taken a long time because I don't know anything about electronics, and I've only just heard about Arduino. So uh, this is kind of my first project with it. You don't need a lot of electronics knowledge. All you need to know is some basic stuff about how to wire up some LEDs. Now the turning on and off bit that I'll tell you about in a minute is pretty difficult. So you'll be able to see how to do that when I show you the programming. And it'll all be free to download. You're all welcome to. So on here, I've just drawn up here uh, an LED, and at the top is a resistor. So let's get a bit closer. So this bit here is a resistor, and we're going to use one of those to manage the current going through the LED. Now, the resistor I've chosen is a 100 ohm resistor, and when you buy LEDs, you'll be able to tell which ones you need. It's a really simple calculation. You can find calculators online to do it for you as well. All you need to know is the current going across the LED when it's powered. Um, an LED has two prongs coming off it, two metal bits, and this is the bit that lights up here. Now, I don't pretend to be really good at uh, electronics, but I can explain this really simply. The anode, that's what this long bit is called here, LEDs usually have a longer leg and a shorter leg. The anode is where your positive current goes in, um, so that's where you power it, and the cathode is where the power goes out and allows the electrons to flow across and make the light. And the cathode is the minus one, and that's the shorter leg. So we're gonna, what we'd do is we'd uh, solder or connect the resistor to the positive, cathode, positive anode just here. So let me just draw you the circuit that we'd actually designed. Right, so in order to get uh, this set up here, which will be my word clock. So imagine these things are LEDs and they'll light up. And it'll say about 25, two, and then I'll choose a PM, like 8 PM, something like that. And it will change as the, as the clock changes. Right, so I'll just draw you out what we'd do with an array. So an LED, I'm just going to draw it as a little round thing here. I'm not going to draw any complicated symbols on it or anything, but we connect a resistor up here. So that's one of these 100 ohm ones. And then that goes to the anode. And we want to connect 
a lot of these LEDs, but I'll make a really small one, but imagine it's uh, eight across by four down. So we're gonna have, is that 32? I think that's 32, hang on, eight times four, 16, 32 LEDs. But I'm just gonna do a short one because I don't have a lot of room here to draw it. So we'll just do a four by four. And then we've got another one here, sorry, four by four, a uh, two by two, and another one here, and another one there. So we need to be able to connect these together and address them individually. And I'll tell you how we're gonna do that. So this is the, uh, the positive end going in here, and this is the positive going in here. So we're gonna have another resistor there. And these will go out to pins on the Arduino. Uh, and this is a positive line going down here to this one. And this is a positive line going down here to this one. So that's positive as well, and that's positive as well. Now, I've got another pen here so that I can draw the negative for you. Uh, and that cathode from the LED here is going out to this bit. I'm going to join that to the other cathode on there. So with that, we can address these individually. So say this one goes to pin one, two, three, four. When you address LEDs like this, you would turn on the power to power one, but you also have to, uh, to address one of these ones here. And on Arduino, you set a socket, port, whatever they're called, a pin to high and low. When it's high, it's got current through and through it, so the power would go through here. But when these ones are high, this is where the power needs to flow to. So you need the negative current to go through this bit. So you need to set them to low. So if I were to address this one here, I would need to say, put the high power on this one, the power goes through, but I haven't set these to low yet, so it's not gonna go anywhere. So if I set this one to low, this LED will light up. Now, if I want to have a different one on, I could set the power on this one to high and this one to low. Now this would light up this LED here, but not this one here because it's not in the same circuit. So power's coming down here. It won't go through here because this one's set to high, but it will go through this one because it's set to low. And there's no power going to these ones through that section there. So that one will just light up. Now, the difficult thing here is trying to get more than one lit up at the same time. And I'll just explain that concept to you now. Right, so in order to get more than one LED lighting up at the same time, with that setup, you can do it, but sometimes you'll get LEDs lighting up that you don't intend. So what you'll need to use is something called persistence of vision. Now this is kind of a weird thing with our eyes that we can't sense uh, like changes in light very, very easily when they're moving very, very quickly. So if I turned a light on that, on and off at 20 microseconds, for example, you wouldn't be able to see that it was going on and off. It might dim slightly, but you wouldn't be able to tell. Now what you do is in your programming, you turn one LED that you want on, you set a delay, and then turn them all off, and then turn the next one on, and, do the, and repeat that for whichever LEDs you want on. Now that's the complicated programming bit, but I'll show you how to do that and I'll put the code up so you can see it, but it might be in the next video because I haven't actually finished the thing yet. So let me just show you what we've done so far. Hold on. So currently, this is the setup. Now there's quite a lot of wiring there, and this over here is an Arduino. You can see that there's a, a little orange light there. That just says that uh, it's talking to my computer at the moment, and a green light to say it's on. Now look, there's an awful lot of wires there. Uh, with this camera here, actually, you can see that uh, the light is changing very, very quickly. It's picking up that frequency. Um, you can see the lines going down the screen there. You can see that it's, it is actually turning on and off very, very quickly. Even though your eyes can't really tell, the camera can pick up that frequency. Each one of these here is connected up in a similar way in fact, in the same way to the way I just showed you. So there are lots and lots of LEDs, all using this breadboard. Now, breadboard is really, really simple. It's just lots of these little wires, and you just plug them in. Um, where did that one go? Not there. <laughs> Went into that bit. Um, so you can see there, like this 
this LED isn't on, but if I plug it into the wrong section, it allows the power to go through, but we don't want that to happen. So I'll just plug it back into where it was. Um, so I don't know if you can see, but they're all, they all have these uh, resistors at the top. So each one of these has power going down this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, and blah, 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 blah. And then all the, uh, the negatives go across here. So we've got a massive array. Now it's not the biggest array you'll see. If you have a look on, in, on the internet, you'll find quite a few more massive arrays. And my Arduino doesn't have as many pins as, it, as I'd like really, so I can't address an, a large amount. I also have a real-time clock attached to this, which is something I bought off eBay. Uh, you can pick them up for about eight pounds. In fact, this whole setup didn't cost all that much money. So once I've made it into a clock, it'd be quite cheap. Uh, the real-time clock keeps the time for me. Now I could set it on the Arduino when I upload the program, but uh, it won't keep time very well. So this will keep the time, and the battery lasts for about five years, so it's pretty good. And it connects the analog pins on the Arduino and into five volt into ground as well. So that's the five volt is the the positive charge, and then the negative is here, allowing the power to throw, flow through. Now it's connected to my computer by a USB cable. You'll see that it says property of DMU, that's who I work for. Um, so I've borrowed a lot of this stuff and uh, they very kindly lent me a lot of wire and stuff to connect all these things up. Now so that's 32 LEDs in an array there and uh, now we'll quickly have a look at the program.